So hey there, welcome back to the show. This is Josh. I'm excited to be your host. Uh, and today I've got a special guest on with me. His name is Tom Keitner. Tom is the host of the Money Pit podcast, which is a nationally syndicated radio show uh, around home improvement. Uh, and Tom is an absolutely phenomenal guest. He's actually one of the original kind of founding inspectors that created the inspection process and the licensing procedure for home inspectors in the state of New Jersey. They've trained and licensed over 7,000 inspectors using his criteria. Um, and he is an expert at remodeling houses and buildings and apartments. And you're going to love this because you're going to hear some real insider secrets on how to make sure you reduce or eliminate contractor risk. So on the show today, we're going to talk about number one, how to make sure that you have the proper inspector to inspect the bones of your apartment buildings and your homes, right? The water, the water, the water, the HVAC, the boilers, the chillers, the windows and roofs. That's number one. Number two, we're going to talk about why you should hire a structural engineer when you have a major renovation and how to take the spec, meaning the design from the engineer to help eliminate contractor risk. That's number two. Number three, we're going to talk about the importance of a reinspection after the work is done. And number four, we're going to talk about contractor communication and change orders. And finally, number five, the importance of a designer when you are remodeling buildings, whether it's the common spaces, whether it's a kitchen, whether it's a bathroom, hiring a designer again in order to eliminate contractor risk and stay on time and on budget. For those of you that want to sleep well at night, you want to remodel your buildings, your properties, your single family, your commercial buildings, you want to do it well, sleep well at night, and stay on time and in budget. This is a fantastic interview with Tom Keitner from The Money Pit. Here we go. Welcome to the Accelerated Investor Podcast with Josh Cantwell. If you're looking to retire early with forever passive income, you're in the right place. This podcast is the go-to destination for real estate investors both active and passive, and multifamily apartment investors, both new, intermediate, and advanced. Now, sit back, listen, learn, and accelerate your business, your life, and your investing with the Accelerated Investor Podcast. So, hey, Tom, listen, welcome to Accelerated Real Estate Investor. Thanks for joining me on the show today. Hey, Josh. It's great to be here. Tom, listen, Tom's got a super popular and exciting podcast of his own. So I want to make sure all of you guys know about that right away. Um, it's the Money Pit Podcast. So make sure you guys check that out. Tom shares all kinds of strategies. And what's what we're going to talk about today uh, Tom is a, a long, long expert in not only home inspections, but remodeling. And we're going to talk about what's working in today's market. So Tom, let's, let's start with today, right? So if you were remodeling a house, your own house, an apartment complex, and thinking about doing remodeling projects today that fit the modern home and the modern apartment complex today, what are some things that you would be doing? What are some things that you think are at the top of the list that increase value, increase value of residences or apartment buildings? And what are some things maybe that people think increase value that are a big giant waste of money? So let's talk about what's popular and yeah. exciting and profitable in today's market. Well, first of all, you want to protect your investment. So I think a good place to start is to evaluate the structure and the mechanical systems. Now, hopefully, if you've worked with inspectors uh, that advise you on your purchase, you have a pretty good sense as to where you are on that. Because let's face it, you don't want to put money into a place making it look fantastic, adding all sorts of value to the experience of living there if you don't have good bones. So I want to start with that. Make sure you've kind of cleared that hurdle first. You know, if you've had a home inspection, uh, if you've had an engineering inspection, you know, was the foundation solid? 
uh, is it building watertight? You know, water, 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 three most important things to remember with a house or a building, right? If it gets in, nothing's good's gonna happen. And man, if it gets in an apartment complex, it can spread like wildfire. And by wildfire, I mean mold, right? That's a big issue today. So I would make sure that I am zipped up structurally. And then mechanically, look, you're gonna face expenses. You got a budget now to do improvements. So let's evaluate the mechanical systems. And if there are those that are going to need improvement, make sure that you're budgeting for its estimated life when, you know, you think it's going to fail or when, you know, and your inspectors and your experts can tell you that. Look, if you got water heaters that are all 10 years old, chances are in the next two or three years, you're going to be replacing them right, right and left. So I would make sure that my mechanical and structural systems are in good shape now. If anything is on the brink of needing a replacement, do it now during the remodeling. It's better. Uh, and so now, you know, you have a good property that maybe at this moment doesn't look great. Uh, from a decor standpoint, but it's got great bones. It's not going anywhere. So once that sort of box has been checked, then I think you could move to looking at some of the decor issues and the and the value the value issues that people look for, like you know new kitchens, for example. Now that's one that always gets me because every time I hear about somebody doing a kitchen, we're talking about dropping 50, 60, 70, 100 grand on a kitchen. Look, I'm remodeling a house right now. It's built in the 1900s. I spent 1,800 bucks on the cabinets, all in. That's it. Didn't include the countertop, but I found cabinets that were durable, that didn't cost a whole lot of money, and was going to be looking great in this new apartment. So make sure that you're looking at the things that people want, kitchens and baths. And in terms of the decor, neutral rocks. I think there's a great lesson to be learned from, uh, from uh, executive search companies that will do the, re the uh, relocation of executives, right? If you're going to be moving <clears throat> across the country, a reload company comes in, they agree to buy your house. Man, as soon as your moving van clears the corner, you know, they're in there neutralizing the whole place, right? They're taking out that precious wallpaper that you and your wife spent months picking out and it's gone, right? And it's all going to be about tan carpets or beige carpets and off-white walls because when you have a new uh, a buyer that's going to walk in that place, a new renter, they want to imagine their stuff in that space. And if their decor doesn't align with yours, that's going to take away from the value of the property. So neutralizing is real important. And then focusing on those areas that people really find value in, like kitchens, like baths, like closets. You know, adding some organization to closets is something that people will remember about that place if you're competing against others uh, in your area. I think those are the sorts of things that I would focus on initially, Josh. Yeah, I love it. Um, you know, the style, if you're getting the specifics and the colors and things, <laughs> this whole wave of white and then gray gray lvp and and yeah. granites that were white with gray and black and then going mm -hmm. the stainless route now it seems like a lot of gold is coming back in and some of the brown <laughs> tones and some, yeah. of the, some of the uh butcher block countertops we actually do yeah. butcher blocks in a lot of our apartments because it's, yeah. it's so affordable actually it, it gives right people an upgraded feeling like a piece of granite for about mm -hmm. 20% of the cost of granite, right? Yep. Um, and so the challenge is, is how do you remodel a building or remodel a place that if you're remodeling a house to flip it, sell it for the next buyer, you're just trying to appeal to that one buyer. If you're buying right. an apartment complex that you're going to own for the next 5, 10, 15 years, that that neutralization is unbelievably important because you got one mm -hmm. crack at it. You got one crack at doing your yeah. capex budget and spending could be half a million to two three million dollars in upgrading yeah. that building if you do something that's just in style today well guess what happens seven years from now that's right you're coming out of pocket to do it all over again that's right that's critical yeah what are some things you so, think so that staying staying muted i think is really it's important here right you can't you can't go too loud on anything because that's loud may be popular right now but man it's not going to last so you're right that neutral it's okay to bring some of those grays and those browns in and those tones in, but you got to stay neutral. So again, people can imagine that place, uh, you know, containing themselves in their stuff. And also it's going to carry because look, you don't want to have individual color schemes for each apartment. Right? You got to be able to maintain this uh, in a reasonably efficient way. No doubt. No doubt. Um, you, let's go back to the first comment you made about good bones, because this yeah. is, I think, especially for apartment buildings, that's critical. Mm -hmm. You don't get a big pop as far as rent jumps, but boilers, chillers, 
windows. Um, we just dropped 400 windows into one of our complexes that had almost 1400 windows. We actually had, we bought the windows uh, from Lowe's, just massive commercial custom, like, like bulk <laughs> order. And we brought a <clears throat> installer in, but we're not going to get any rent jump for that. We're not going to get like the residents expect windows that work that you don't, you don't right. get a decent rent for that. But super important. Now, boilers, same thing. Like they expect their apartment to heat. So if you're not an expert at this, what kind of advice, Tom, do you think our audience should know about hiring an expert? Listen, I mean, you're one of almost like the founding fathers of the New Jersey inspection system, like getting people licensed to become home inspectors. Yeah. But a lot of people don't really know a lot about, about these mechanical things. It's critical to get them right because you don't. Last thing you want is a fifty thousand dollar boiler going down. Right. So, what wh what kind of things do our people need to know who are basically novice investors about yeah. some of these inspections and how to hire a good inspector to kind of do those kind of things for them? Sure. So a couple of things come to mind. So, so first of all, um, you know the foundation of a good home inspector is his independence or her independence, right? So he has no conflict of interest. The problem with um, a lot of folks that are experienced in investing is they turn to the contractor for advice. Well, the contractor, I mean, you may be a great contractor, but contractors have conflicts of interest. And they don't always also have the expertise that you need. Um, they think, I think they, you know, naturally try to stretch what services they can offer. But a couple of things come to mind. So let's talk about that foundation example I gave you earlier, right? Um, I get calls from people all the time that, that discover what I consider to be significant foundation issues. Now, look, all foundations have cracks uh, and movement and you know, cracks in walls and nail pops. That's not what we're talking about here. But if you had a horizontal crack in the foundation wall because you had lousy drainage and over the last 10, 20 winters, the wall just started to bend and bend and bend to the point where it's got a big crack in it. So what do you do about that? Well, those folks would call contractors. Contractors would come in with all sorts of ideas on how to fix it. That is not the way to go. If you've got a big structural issue like that, you wanna to go to an engineer, a structural engineer, and here's why. First of all, you have the independence, right? Secondly, the engineer is gonna specify for you exactly what's going on and how to fix it. And he'll actually specify step-by-step step what's gonna be required, steps, materials, et cetera. That spec is critical. You take that spec, now you go to contractors and you can go to several contractors. You can go, look, I know you have your experience. Here's how I want this uh, to be repaired. It's gonna be consistent with what the engineer specified, right? Then the contractor accepts the job. You know that all the contractors, by the way, are bidding apples to apples because you didn't give them a choice. You said, this is how it has to be done. And then once that contractor is done, there's another important step, and that is you have the engineer come back and re-inspect and certify that that repair was done right. So now what have we done? We've created a, ped a pedigree. We took a, a major issue in the building structurally, and we have evaluated professionally. It's been repaired consistent with the professional's advice. That's been confirmed. And now you know if any question comes up in the future as to, hey, why is this wall repaired? You can explain that background. And it's like I say, it's like a pedigree that it was done right. So I think that's really important uh, to just be mindful of the contractor advice. It's always better to have independent design advice. Uh, independent um, advice from a home inspector is similar to that. Now, a home inspector is designed to be a generalist, right? Um, they're not going to get into uh, areas that you can't see. For example, we're not going to do any kind of invasive inspection. But that said, you know, those trained eyeballs on that property over a two or three or four hour period that takes to do that inspection can reveal a host of information that's really valuable. Not only can they pinpoint defects that are present, they can give you a heads up uh, on maybe life expectancies. You know, very often uh, I'll see a roof when I was doing home inspections and I would explain to the, to the client, look, it's not leaking now. Um, it's not showing cracks, but I'm seeing early signs of some mineral loss, some things that tell me that, look, this is going to be probably a big expense for you in the next five years. And I just want you to know about that because now you know what you're up against, right? right. Um, that kind of information and then discovering you know, the defects. There's been a number of times in my career when I walked into the front door of the house. One of the things I inspected was the furnace. Um, found a cracked heat exchanger, very dangerous, and literally seen the new furnace roll in before I'm done with my inspection. It was that bad. So you know, there's a lot of value you can get from that advice. 
And that's going to be different than what you get from a contractor, the contractor that comes in and, and you want to do your kitchen. Every contractor comes in and go, oh, we're going to do these cabinets. We're going to do these faucets. That's great. That sounds good. Another guy comes in, he's got another whole idea. Well, how are you uh, possibly going to compare and contrast those opportunities? How do you do that? How do you know if you're getting a good price or a bad price? Well, if you have a spec first, I think that's important. And if it's a kitchen, go to a kitchen designer. It's worth the money. To, to basically lay out what this place is going to look like when you're done and what materials, what brand of faucet, you know, what kinds of appliances, all those things impact the budget, right? So if you can figure that out ahead of time, you're going to be way far ahead uh, of this project. And you're really going to get a project that delivers value that's finished on time and on budget without surprises. I love it. Are you ready to automate and explode your real estate investing? We're searching for extremely motivated individuals who are sick and tired of wasting time and want to finally see real results from their real estate investing business. We're searching for investors looking to get to the next level and become a bigger, better version of themselves while being a more successful real estate investing entrepreneur. Apply for mentoring and coaching at joshcantwellcoaching.com forward slash podcast. That's joshcantwellcoaching.com forward slash podcast. And Tom, I love it because you're making me feel so good about some of the stuff that we do. <laughs> um, I, you know, we yeah. just bought a $16.3 million apartment complex, 300 units. Um, you know, we had a boiler inspector come in. We had a roof inspector come in. We had a structural engineer come in. Uh, and so when we looked at the boilers, it wasn't a contractor telling us that, you know, out of the 18 boilers, four of them needed replaced. It was an engineer and a boiler kind of inspector expert that right. said four of these are going to get, got to go because this right. could, uh, a fire hazard in the next six to 12 months, yeah. these have to go. And these other ones have X amount of life left in them. Mm -hmm. And so we got that done during our due diligence process. Same thing with mm -hmm. the roofs, same thing with the windows. Well, guys came in and said, Hey, we've got all these new windows that have been installed. Then we called these windows, the 1999, we called them the Prince windows, like Prince, you know, sing that song, 1999. <laughs> right. so these were the Prince windows, we called them. And they were like the silver ones. And they were, a lot of them had cracked seals and they had to go. Yeah. So, but we originally budgeted, we thought we were going to have to replace 800 windows. We ended up doing 400 because mm -hmm. a number of them, although they were a little older, the seals were good. They were in good shape. They did not need replace. And they said, look, these have another 10 years of life expectancy. No, no reason to spend the money on the, on the other 400. So that's right. a lot that almost saved us almost $350,000. So and, and it gave you all that knowledge to, to now you can have basically a reserve analysis you basically have a reserve analysis. Now you know in what year you're going to need budget to replace the rest of those windows or replace the rest of the other boiler. And so now you have information that's really valuable as you're owning and managing that building because you know where you're going. Right, right. Yeah, it allows me to sleep well at night. Exactly. Yeah. And the same thing you mentioned was about design, kind of comparing, contrasting the designer to the inspector. The designer, same thing. Like we just hired a designer and she came in with all kinds. This was specifically for exterior paint, rebranding, mm -hmm. landscaping, signage. Right. If we had a contractor come in, we would have got 10 different prices for different types of signs. We would have got all right. different kind of quotes for yep. paint. We would have got all different kind of landscapers with different ideas on how it should be landscaped. Right. Yep. And I would never be comparing apples to apples, right? Yes. Now exactly. we have a design with, we have an ff &E sheet with a legend that says mm -hmm. this specific paint this is a specific color this is yep. where it's going to go now the contractor can come back and say okay well how many how many gallons and gallons of gallons of paint do i need and be, because we go buy a lot of our own material now we just know we're really just paying for labor right yeah. now we can really yeah. winnow this thing down to saying we know what we want we know what color it is we can go to lowe's we can go to home depot we can go to our commercial accounts and our reps and say hey how much is this going to cost compare them ourselves and mm -hmm. now the contractor is going to come in and say, look, I got all the material, <laughs> yep. only the labor, right? Yep. Can you do the job? Show me your experience. It's all Tom. I think what this is making me think about is sleeping well at night, right? Yeah. yeah. No surprises. $300,000 house that you're doing or a $3 million or a $30 million apartment. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. We all want to sleep well at night knowing that we're not wasting money, we're not overspending, and we don't have these issues that are going to pop up out of nowhere, right? So yeah, the yeah. advice that Tom's given us, the inspector designer, sleep well at night. That's what I'm taking out of this. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You do sleep well at night and you can plan financially what your future is on this property. So, you know, you know what your rent income is, uh, you know what your cost of money is, and now you know what the cost of those improvements is likely to be over the next decade or so. I love it. Tom, what are some improvements that you've seen people make that that have almost no ROI, that really don't like really help the value of the building or selling a property or improving an apartment? Is there anything that stands out that you think are mistakes that investors are making? Well, uh, one one comes to mind are pools, right? In some parts of the country, people expect to have pools, but in other, and that's generally the South, right? In the North, it's always interesting to me that you know all those years I spent home inspecting, you'd have people that would come in as a buyer and go, "Oh, great, it has a pool," and just as many come in, "Oh no, it's got a pool." because they're worried about the safety of the pool. They're worried about the maintenance of their pool. Maybe they got little kids, you know, all of those same reasons. I've had just as many people ask me how to close a pool, how to, how to fill in a pool as what to do with it, right? So, so just be really wary of, of those types of improvements, you know, before you, you jump into them. And the other thing, and I don't, I don't think we see this much with professionals, but, you know, you see this a lot with, with homes, design ideas, their, their choice in wallpaper or carpet or floor covering at some point in time was just awful. You know, you can't, you, you can't imagine looking at a room that's got, you know, yellow plaid wallpaper and you're thinking somebody at some time in the history of this building was sitting in, was standing in a wallpaper store going, hey, I like the yellow plaid. Let's get that. You know, right. like, oh my God, you know, so, so those, um, you know, those sorts of things, look, there's improvements like that, that you can do that. I kind of feel like they come like out of the vacation budget, right? Hey, you take a vacation, you have a great time. doesn't have much resale value, but you had a good time. So if you're going to enjoy it while you're there, go ahead and do it. You know, if you want a hot tub in your basement, go ahead put your hot tub in your basement. Don't expect to say, and I have a hot tub in my basement. So I want an extra $10,000 for this house because it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Got it. Love it, Tom. Um, Listen, I wanted to ask you specifically about your show. This is one of the most popular home improvement shows and podcasts. And um, I wanted to ask you as we kind of, you know, we're kind of round third here and head for home Mm -hmm. is our subscribers listen and engage in your show. What kind of things are they going to learn? What kind of things are you going to tell them on your show? Why should they listen to your show? Because home improvement, listen, I I say this all the time to my audience, whether it's an apartment improvement, a house improvement, the biggest risk as an investor, contractor risk, it's doing these improvements the right way on time, on budget, and having a finished product that the consumer, whether it's a buyer or a renter, the consumer is going to want. Right. Every yes. time I've lost money on a property, it's always been because the contractor either went over budget, went over time, or there was some amenity that we were trying to add that did not work. All, you roll all that up to me, it's contractor risk. So yeah. if we can eliminate that as much as possible, um, I think we can be better investors. And I know you talk about that on your show. Yeah. So let me address the contractor risk and I'll tell you about the show next. So I think one of the things that is always challenging in this industry in the relationships between contractor and client is communication. Contractors are not naturally great communicators in a lot of respects, you know. I mean, let's face it, there's a lot of guys that go come into the business and, you know, maybe they started working for somebody. um, But swinging a hammer is not the same as running a business of hammer swingers, right? It's a different skill set. Think about that, right? You You could be the greatest contractor in the world. But if you can't run a contracting business, and I mean, manage the money, manage the men, manage the relationship with the client, you know, you're going to fail. And consumers, uh, you know, also are not experienced as as contractor buyers, so to speak. They're not doing these types of things every day. So where does it go wrong? I mean, one example is, you know, the consumer sees you put the hole in the wall and goes, "Ah, you know, I really think that that window is too small. Can we do this? Sure. You know, you start doing this thinking, okay, well, I got a, you know, I get a bigger header. I got to buy different windows and you're, you're sort of adding it up, but you don't tell the consumer 
very clearly, yes, if it's going to add ten, twenty thousand dollars, whatever it is, to the cost of the job, mm -hmm. and too many people fail to do change orders. Those are so important. Of course, for those that don't know what a change order is, a change order is basically an addendum to your contract. And it says, we agreed to do X, we're making this change, and that's going to result uh, in a credit or a debit against that value, right? And this way, at the end of the job, there are no surprises on what's owed to you as the contractor uh, and what the consumer has to add on over and above what they've agreed to. So I think that communication piece it, it can't be understated, Josh, it's critical. Uh, in terms of my show, thanks for asking. So we've been doing the Money Pit Home Improvement radio show. It's syndicated on 400 stations around the nation, as well as the podcast now. We've been doing the show since 1999. Started off on a dozen stations in Boston area, small syndicate, and just grew it. Uh, I you know, spent about 20 years as a home inspector, overlapped some of those years doing radio. Um, I was happy to get out of the crawl spaces and out of the 120 degree attics. Uh, on the weekends and then just kind of like grew into what we do today. So, you know, having that background along with my co-host, Leslie Segretti, uh, we can handle just about any question that uh, a, a pro or a consumer is going to have about a house. And if we don't know, we'll tell you that, but, you know, we have a 24 uh, seven phone line, 888 money pit. And people call that all the time. They ask, they leave us questions to answer on the show, or we they'll call in during the live broadcast. Um, and we do Q&A. So we do Q&A. And then every show, uh, we do uh, maybe three editorial topics, you know, of, of things that we think are interesting uh, that are going to be coming up or, or current, you know, to this the time the show is going to air. Uh, and so if you listen to the show, uh, we hope you'll be informed, you'll be entertained, you'll be inspired, you'll get some ideas on projects that you want to do yourself or maybe recommend <clears throat> to your clients. And you'll have a little fun along the way. That's yeah, what it's all cool. about. Listen, this is a great, great uh, piece of advice, fast hitting, hard hitting show, fast hitting, hard hitting advice. Uh, so many things I took notes on, Tom. So I appreciate you making time for us today. You got it, man. Accelerated investor. Thanks for being here. You got it. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Tom. The money pit.com forward slash podcast is his show. Uh, if you want to reach out to him again, moneypit.com for all your home improvement needs, ideas to listen to the show, to get better ideas of how to use the spaces, the renovations, the dollars, uh, check out Tom's website. Also, if you are looking to consistently invest in apartment buildings and you want to be an owner operator and do it yourself for your own account, but you're looking to partner joint venture, you have a little bit of coaching and mentoring. Join me at joshcantwellcoaching.com. There you can apply to be one of our mastermind members. And if you are an investor and you're not looking to be an operator, but you want to invest in multifamily apartments and you just want to kind of set it and forget it, you want to write the check and get a great rate of return and invest in apartments without being the operator and be passive, go to freelandventures.com slash passive to see more of our investment opportunities. We'll see you next time. Take care. You were just listening to the Accelerated Investor Podcast with Josh Cantwell. If you enjoyed this episode and learned something new, help us build the AI community by leaving a review and five-star rating on our iTunes podcast channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you never miss another episode. To see passive investing opportunities, visit freelandventures.com slash passive. To start your journey toward the lifestyle you've always dreamed of with multifamily apartments, apply for one-on-one -on -one coaching with Josh at www.joshcantwellcoaching.com. <laughs>